Okay, listeners, we've got something very, very special and something very different for our show right now. Now, we're actually going to be talking gaming for a little bit and music, and we thought we would actually get the guys from North Lane on the phone to talk a little bit about this because it's a pretty big weekend for these guys. Not only have they got NotFest, but they've also got a game coming out in beta testing, which I'm sure they are going to be... Very, very excited about playing as well. So we thought we would get them on the phone today to talk a little bit about not only their music, but also about gaming as well. John and Nick, welcome to the program. Thanks, mate. How you going? How you going? Good. Now, guys, as I said, you've got a pretty big weekend ahead of you because you've got NotFest, but there's also a brand new game going through beta testing this weekend that I know you guys are excited about. So let's kick off by talking a little bit about your gaming um, when did you guys both get into gaming? Oh, okay, first. Um, I feel like as long as I can remember, the very first Super Nintendo or Game Boy, so like five or six years old or something. Yeah, yeah. I remember playing um, Zelda to the past. The <laughs> first game on the SNES, the like box yeah, yeah. Nintendo back in the day. And that kick-started. <laughs> yeah, 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 my addiction. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell us a little bit about that journey, because, of course, uh, a lot of people play games when they're younger, and some people drift off, and some people keep going. Why have you kept gaming, like, t- to today? Like, is it something that you do to relax, or do you like the challenges that it provides? Why do you guys still play games today? Yeah, I... Um... Well, I think I speak for both of us when it's it's something that we do to decompress, I guess. And um, I I personally like um, you know playing sort of fantasy games or you know games where RPGs. You, yeah RPGs where you can where you can sort of uh, immerse yourself in uh, an outer world sort of being um, so you know and um, explore a, a world that's not your own. Um, also yeah. being able to sink time into a game, I feel like for me, um, it might have something to do with my ADHD, but yes, yeah, sinking time and getting rewarded for the time that you put into it, it's actually a lot like songwriting. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. yeah, go ahead. I <laughs> don't know what you're going to say. Oh, I was just going to ask you, you mentioned your songwriting there as well. Have video games yeah. kind of inspired you with your writing over the years? Uh, yeah, definitely. I, I feel like before Northland even started, I would be playing games and listening to the soundtracks of games and just thinking, I want to do something great like <laughs> this or be a part of something great like this. So I feel like games have actually fueled a lot of my um, creativity. What are some of the soundtracks for games out there that have been really memorable for you over the years? Um, I'm, I mean, the Doom soundtrack amazing um there's a game on playstation 5 called returnal uh which is an artist called the uh, hassan cloak is i think his real name is bobby acrylic i don't know if i'm saying that right um which is a very dark sort of sci-fi sounding uh soundtrack yeah um those two come to mind straight away now We wanted to talk a little bit about Diablo as well. Tell us a little bit about your love affair with this franchise. When did you first start playing? When did you first start playing Diablo? Yeah, well, um, when I remember when I was a kid, um, and Diablo Two was out, and I didn't have a PC, so I would go over to my friend's house, and we would literally I could have a sleepover, and we would literally (laughs) play Diablo the whole time, all night, and we just, like, every time we'd finish a quest or, or you know, we'd, we'd, one of our characters would die or something, we would <laughs> hand over the controller and it would just be, yeah, endless, endless gaming. Um, and so, yeah, I have a very fond memories of that time and, and Diablo specifically. And um, we, when Diablo 3 came out, it came out on the Nintendo Switch, which is uh, ideal console touring. Um, it's so portable and you can also, uh, play multiplayer on it. So we, when we were on tour, we would, you know, in our da- downtime, we would sink hours into Diablo 3, 
into our various characters and it was just fun because we could all play together but also work on our individual character and and yeah that was that's super rewarding and especially if you you're away on tour for you know weeks on end there, there is a lot of downtime you want to sort of kill some time and it was such a such a good way to do that mm-hmm. so yeah it's definitely made us pretty damn keen for yeah. Diablo 4 to come out yeah, so how important, you talked about downtime when you're out on the road, how important is it to occupy your mind during that time? Um, in the downtime? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Otherwise, you'll go insane and you'll kill your bandmates. <laughs> 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 yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, touring, obviously, you play, you know, you might play half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour, maybe more, a night. So there's obviously a lot of time around that. Um, you, you have to sound check, you know, set up, pack down your gear, but there's still a lot of time to sort of kill, depending on where you are. I think a lot of the times when we're touring, um, we end up in places uh, where we don't really know the surroundings, so we just hop onto the bus okay. and play games. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's, it's definitely very important for us. So you mentioned Diablo 4. Um, just then as well. This weekend is the beta weekend for it. Tell us a little bit about how you guys are going to be involved with that, but also how are you going to juggle it with Knotfest? Yeah, so we were actually just talking about this earlier today. Um, we're likely going to bring our play- well, my PlayStation on the bus. So we're, usually we would fly around for a festival like this, um, between the cities, but we're, we've actually hired a tour bus for it. Um, so we'll probably be plugging in the PlayStation and giving it a go on there. Yeah, I mean, definitely want to test out the beta this weekend. So um, that's kind of our only opportunity to do so. <laughs> <laughs> what are you expecting from number four? Like, is there anything that you guys are expecting will be there that might be different this time around or, or not? Um, definitely, like, the new classes, all the new classes look really cool, the open world with no loading zones is really cool as well, I feel like that helps you immerse yourself in a game like that. Definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, there's a new sort of weapon system that I saw in, um, some videos on the internet that seems pretty interesting, it sort of makes it even more diverse than it was previously, um, there's things like mounts, yeah, um, <laughs> But like specialize even more into the, each of the classes, which is really yeah. cool. Get deep in the customization, which yeah. I'm all about. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Now, I want to talk to you about Knotfest because, of course, we are so excited that this festival is finally coming to Australia. I think we've all been looking for, yeah. for, to it for so long. And then, of course, we had the lockdowns and everything as well. How excited are you guys about being part of this festival? Uh, incredibly excited, man. Yeah. We've um we've got an awesome slot as well. I think we're on at like four thirty five in the afternoon. There's no clashes as well, so anyone that's there um will likely get to see whoever they want to see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think it's laid out really well with the two stages and um, you know, sort of flip flopping bands. That way everyone can see every band, like exactly. John said, no clashes. Um there's some amazing bands. This is the best lineup for a heavy metal festival I've seen in a lot of while, yeah. in a long time. So I'm pumped to see a lot of the bands that are playing, which is rare. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, yeah, it's going to be awesome yeah, weekend. Yeah, so which bands are you guys looking forward to checking out? Um, I'll be checking out Knock Loose. Yep. I haven't seen them before. I'll probably watch Trivium as well, considering... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I kind of grew up listening to that first Trivium album as well. Yeah, um, Spirit Box, gonna check them yeah, out, I think. Um, obviously, Park Ray. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's, it's a no brainer, really. Um, yeah, for all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and what have you guys got in store for your fans? Like, with your set list, what, what are you thinking at the moment? Um, it's We've actually been working on this set list for a while. We were kind of trialing it out in America uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, but we've fine-tuned it a little bit more since, since then, and then you can kind of expect a, a seamless sort of song-to-song, I guess, like, experience like you would see at, uh, you know, like a DJ sort of performance where there's no gaps in between songs. Yeah. Um, we've, also, we've also got 
a really cool um, production coming in for this for this tour, this mini tour, like LED, big LED screens and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, really cool. Something we've not done before. Um, we haven't gone this, this hard into no. the production before, so that's going to be pretty exciting. Yeah. Uh, visually and um, sonically. Sonically. It's going to be an experience. How has that changed for you guys? Like, what's that been like trying to think of visuals and stuff like that that you can have um, at the back of the stage? I mean, one of the things that really stood out the other night for me at My Chemical Romance was the post-apocalyptic city that they had at the back of the stage. So, it it plays an important part. So, what's that been like for you guys coming up with those visuals? Well, well, we we have a friend of ours that does all of that sort of stuff and we kind of just give him... um, you know, a little bit of a concept to go off and then he kind of does the rest, but he does um, use symbols and imagery from all of the albums for each song, so each song is, like, very unique visually. Awesome. Yeah, I think it's like doing those, having the LED walls and having, like, a visual concept to, to like, a live band performance just adds that other dimension. Yeah. It makes it, it makes it so much more... Um, um, yeah, 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 totally. So we're trying to really lean into that. Um, and yeah, I mean, to, to, to be able to visually represent these songs as well, you know, just adds another dimension to the whole thing. So Yeah. <laughs> How stressful is it going to be for you guys if you're playing a really, really intense part of Diablo 4 and your <laughs> set time is hastily approaching? Oh. How stressful will that be? <laughs> oh, that's going to make me sweat. Um, yeah, priorities are going to be juggled this weekend. I think. Um, no, we'll have to. We have to be careful. Yeah. <laughs> we, we have to be really careful to check ourselves. We do tend to uh, get lost in games, so we might have to get the tour manager to to, <laughs> to come clean up our act. Yeah, M- multiple alarms. I'm thinking phone alarms, yeah, yeah, watch yeah, alarms, yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, anything, yeah. anything to get us, get us ready. Well, guys, we are running out of time, but thank you so much for chatting to us today. And before we go, what would you like to say to your fans out there, ones who are heading along to Knotfest, but also ones who are looking forward to Diablo 4 as well? <laughs> well, 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 I mean, if the fans coming to Knotfest, I feel like they, they know what they're in for. It's going to be a banger of a weekend. Yeah. Um, those who are going to jump in Diablo, maybe get some of those Maybe get maybe get a playlist, a not fest not fest playlist going, so you can you can slay demons. <laughs> yeah. Not fest fans. I don't know. It sounds pretty good to me. I mean, I'll probably be doing that but live. I'll be hearing the bands in the background while slaying um, demons. So yeah, I feel like it's pretty pretty good combo. I feel like everyone should jump on board. Yeah, I'm thinking that one of those big screens at Not Fest would actually be a quite good um, gaming platform as well. Hey. <laughs> oh my god! I hadn't thought about that. That might be I mean, that. That way, we don't need to really stop playing. No. We can sort of try and merge the two. Yeah. Yeah. Just tell you want of HDMI. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I guess I guess your fans would kind of kill me if I didn't ask this as well. What have you guys got planned for the rest of the year as well after Knotfest? Um, we have a tour in the states in September, um, and just before that. We are recording some new music. Awesome. Oh, well, Well, I cannot wait to hear that new music. But guys, thank you for being such great sports on the show today. We want to wish you all the best of luck with Knotfest and um, all the best of luck with Diablo 4 as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. No problem.